Welcome to the MOOCs course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Phosphorus Industries Phosphates. Recapitulation of uh, previous two lectures. We started discussions on phosphorus industries, how it compares with nitrogen industry, etc. Then we started discussion on production of elemental phosphorus by electric furnace process under which we discussed its chemical reactions, raw materials, quantitative requirements, process flow chart and description, major engineering problems, economics and uses, etc. Those things we have discussed. Then we started our discussion on production of phosphoric acid. We realized three categories. The first category is electric furnace process under which we had uh, discussed two processes, direct conversion at plant site and oxidation and hydration of phosphorus near consumers market. In the second category, we had wet processes where we discussed uh, two methods, strong acid leaching process and then hydrochloric acid leaching process for the production of phosphoric acid. Third category of uh, blast furnace process which is uh, no more competitive, so that we have not discussed. In this lecture, we conclude the phosphorus industries by discussing about different types of phosphates. Okay? Let us start with calcium phosphates. Low grade calcium phosphates are produced in large tonnages, so as to use as uh, fertilizers and based on the method of production from phosphate rock, there are two types or two grades of uh, calcium phosphates are possible. Methods of production in the sense, method is same, but the uh, basic acid that is uh, we are using to produce this calcium phosphate is different. If you are reacting phosphate rock with sulfuric acid, then you get a uh, super phosphate. Right? If you react phosphate rock with phosphoric acid, then you get a, a triple superphosphate. These are the two grades possible. Actually, they are differ not by the acid that has been used for the reaction with uh, phosphate uh, rock, but also with what is the percentage of P2O5 that is present in these phosphates. So, superphosphate and triple superphosphate are two grades possible. Superphosphate contains 16 to 20 percent of P2O5 and prepared by reacting phosphate rock with uh, sulfuric acid, whereas the triple superphosphate contains 40 to 50 percent P2O5, which is very high, and it is prepared by reacting phosphate rock with phosphoric acid. Okay? However, in India, because of economic reasons, we produce only superphosphates. This is not the only reason. The other reason is that in order to have a balanced mixed fertilizers with appropriate uh, percentage of uh, NPK, it is essential to produce phosphates as well. Right? So, why balanced mixed chemical fertilizers are important? Because they are very uh, essential for better crops with larger profits. So, these are the reason that in general, Mostly in India, we prepare superphosphates, not the triple superphosphate. Now, we start discussion on superphosphate, its uh, reactions, raw materials, production method, engineering problems, etc., that we are going to discuss now. Chemical reactions two reactions are there one is the acidulation reaction, another one is the impurity removal reaction. Under the acidulation reaction, whatever the fluoropatite mineral of uh, phosphate uh, rock is there that react with the sulfuric acid to give superphosphate and then hydrogen fluoride. Second reaction, SiO2 impurity removal, it is done by uh, reacting SiO2 with HF to get uh, silicates and water. The silicates again react with water to produce fluosilicic acid fluosilicic acid is produced by this reaction, which further react with sodium chloride to produce sodium hexafluorosilicate okay, along with the HCl. Right? Raw materials, obviously low grade phosphate is not suitable because these are the super phosphates, so then uh, P2O5 has to be in higher content. Okay? So, you need high grade of natural or beneficiated phosphate rock which is containing 30 to 35 percent P2O5 plus dilute sulfuric acid 60 to 70 percent. 60 to 70 percent pure sulfuric acid is sufficient, but phosphate rock has to be high grade having 30 to 35 percent P2O5 because the name itself they contain superphosphate that means whatever this P2O5 that is going to be present in the final fertilizer that you produce is going to be high. 
quantitative requirements basis 1 ton of superphosphate production if you wanted to uh, do then you need to have phosphate rock 0.5 to 0.6 tons and then sulfuric acid 0.3 to 0.4 tons. Plant capacities usually vary between 100 to 1400 tons per day. Now here we have a flow chart in which we are discussing production of uh, superphosphate as well as the triple superphosphate. First we concentrate on the superphosphate. So you concentrate on this part of the flow chart as of now. Okay. Whatever the phosphate rock is there that you crush in a jaw crusher and then whatever the material is there that you further ground in ring roll mill or hammer mill to a size of 100 mesh. It is very essential. Okay. So, when you crush and ground it to 100 mesh that material you take it to the cyclone to remove the fines and then you get back you know those fines to the feeder. To this feeder 60 percent H2SO4 is supplied right. This 60 percent H2SO4 and then this uh, 100 mesh size or phosphate rock mineral you take into a uh, feeder mixer and then you take into a continuous blender which is approximately 12 to 15 meters length. This feeder when it comes into the reactor it reaction takes place completely almost completely because it is 12 to 15 meters length and then uh, this reactor is having a shaft to which a blade is provided. So, then when this shaft rotates the uh, rotation of the material takes place. So, whatever the material is coming here the product that is gradually taken towards the other end. By the material comes to other end the reaction is almost complete because this rod whatever is there which is having a blade that is moving at a speed of 0.2 to 0.5 meters per minute. Let us say you have a uh, 15 meters blender and then you are feeding the speed is at approximately 0.5 uh, meters per minute. So, then approximately 30 minutes it takes for the material to pass through the entire reactor. Let us say if you have a uh, reactor of 12 meters and then it is moving at a 0.5 uh, meter per minute then approximately 24 minutes it takes. Okay. Let us say you have a 15 uh, meters reactor, but you are moving it only smaller velocity 0.2 meters per minute then approximately 75 minutes it will be there and then let us say if you take 12 meters and then it moves at 0.2 meters per minute velocity then approximately 60 minutes. So, uh, minimum of 24 to maximum of uh, 75 minutes uh, residence time is possible depending on the speed at which you are rotating in this one and then this uh, time itself is sufficient for the you know mixture to complete the reaction. That means almost all uh, reaction would be complete by the moment mixture enter the uh, entry of the reactor and then leaves the reactor. This continuous blender is nothing but the reactor here in this one only reaction is taking place. right? So, that product you can directly take to a rotary granulator which is a cylindrical drum so which is rotating and then to this drum H2O water is sprayed so that the granules will take place. When this drum rotates you know the whatever the mixture is there that forms that takes in a granular form those granules are taken to the rotary dryer right. So, this rotary dryer again a kind of cylindrical drum which rotates and then to this uh, drum hot air approximately at 150 degrees centigrade is provided so that you know what happens the granules whatever coming from the rotary granular they will be dried in this rotary dryer and then moisture content would be less than uh, 0.5 or less than 1 percent of moisture content. So, almost dry superphosphate is taken as a product here from the rotary dryer. Whatever the air that is uh, hot air is circulated for the material to dry. So, that will be going out with certain temperature like 80 degree centigrade or something, but it may be also containing the dust of the whatever the phosphate that you are uh, taking right or super phosphate you produce. So, what you do you take that uh, gas hot gas to the cyclone separator where dust you collect from the bottom and then mix with the product mixture and then send back to the rotary granulator again for the makeup of the size whereas the clean air you can take off. 
approximately right so uh, older methods you know you know reaction was not completing within the prescribed time of 24 to uh, 75 minutes in general so then the mixture is in general stored in den or silo for approximately 24 hours to complete the reaction and then that mixture is again taken to the rotary granulator either way but however nowadays having uh, sophisticated uh, blenders so then reaction completes within the prescribed time of uh, less than uh, uh, one and a half two hours okay in this uh, mixture blender the reaction when it goes on uh, fluorides and then co2 would be forming so they those gases are taken to a scrubber where they are scrubbed with water to uh, recover the fluorides and then vent gas CO2 is taken from the top okay so this is the process the triple phosphate process is also here so we can discuss here itself because it is almost uh, similar right so the triple superphosphate production is shown here here now you have to concentrate on this part of the flow chart right so whatever the phosphate rock is there that you uh, crush in a jaw crusher then take it to the ring roll mill or a hammer mill to reduce the material to 100 mesh size that material along with a preheated phosphoric acid phosphoric acid is preheated to the uh, 65 degrees centigrade and then that preheated phosphoric acid and then this uh, size reduced ground phosphate rock is taken to a feeder continuous feeder and then that is taken to the continuous belt reactor where the reaction completes right so uh, when the reaction completes by the end of the belt of the reactor you know you get the products those product is nothing but the wet triple phosphate uh, along with the some impurities right so then what you do mostly the impurities you can remove by the subsequent processes otherwise you know most of the impurities are uh, taken off from the reactor in the similar way like by using the scrubber method etc right the product what you do the slurry mixture you can take to a rotary granulator which is rotating so because of the rotation of the drum whatever the mixture is there in the reactor that gets granulated because of the you know water that is being sprayed and then rotation action so then it forms the granules these granules are taken to a rotary dryer to which hot air is uh, supplied so that these granules can be dried and then moisture content reduces to approximately less than uh, 1 or 0.5 percent something like that so almost dry superphosphate you can take as a product from here so when you dry this one because of the hot air some of the fines may also be going out along with the air which is slightly uh, cool now 80 degrees something like that inlet air is at 150 degrees centigrade something like that so this air hot air along with the dust is taken to the uh, cyclone separator where the clean air is taken from the top whereas the fines are recycled to the granulator for the size makeup in the rotary granulator again now in either of the process in the sense the superphosphate as well as the triple uh, superphosphate ammonia is being added to the rotary granulator this option is there if you wanted to produce a complete uh, mixed fertilizer having both n and p then only you have to do otherwise if you want only superphosphates then you don't need to add this ammonia to the granulator in the case of uh, superphosphates not only ammonia ammonium sulfate is also added to the feeder along with the sulfuric acid and then phosphate rock if you wanted to produce balanced nitrogen phosphorus fertilizer rather than individual phosphate itself so these things are optional if you wanted to increase the n content in the uh, mixed np fertilizer okay so both uh, superphosphate and triple superphosphate manufacturing we have seen in the flow chart here now these details we are going to discuss in a process description part as well jaw crushers and hammer mills or uh, roll ring mills are used sequentially to ground the phosphate rock to 100 mesh size auto control feed of dilute sulfuric acid and then ground phosphate rock is continuously fed into a steel trough which is nothing but continuous blender it is lead lined and brick lined covered with hood to collect SIF4 and HF fumes along with the CO2. It is also having a rotating mechanism 
using a cast iron blade on a square shaft. This shaft moves the product gradually forward at the rate of 0.2 to 0.5 meters per minute through the 12 to 15 meter reactor conveyor unit. With proper grinding of phosphate rock and then acid flow, reaction is almost complete uh, in this uh, continuous blender itself and then product can be sent directly to a granulator. Older method was to store for a nominal 24 hours period to ensure complete reaction, but nowadays it is not required. Now second part is impurities uh, removal according to chemical reaction shown in a previous slide that uh, reaction we have seen uh, that is uh, SiO2 reacting with HF to give SiF4 etc. those reactions. So this SiF4 and then HF fumes along with CO2 are scrubbed in water whereas the silica is removed by sodium chloride. Porous crumbly material from silo or den is mixed with uh, rock dust from the grinding section of the plant and fed to the inside of the uh, sloping rotary drum. In this rotary drum water is sprayed on tumbling solids to form free flowing granules and to enhance acidulation reaction. Then the product is dried in a rotary dryer and packaged. In the flow chart provision can be made to produce chemical mixed fertilizer containing NP by adding excess sulfuric acid and neutralizing with ammonia in the granulator. Right? This is optional and if you wanted to have a mixed chemical fertilizer having both N and P. If you are happy with only P then it is not required. Next one is triple superphosphate. Here also the reaction is similar only thing that whatever the fluoropartite mineral of the uh, phosphate rock is there that is reacting with the phosphoric acid rather than sulfuric acid. Right? When this fluoropartite react with phosphoric acid it gives triple superphosphate. Raw materials phosphate rock 32 percent P2O5, phosphoric acid 56 percent P2O5 are required. Quantitative requirements to produce 1 ton of triple superphosphate, phosphate rock 0.45 tons and then phosphoric acid 0.62 tons are required and these ratios vary depending on how much P2O5 that is present in the raw material. If you have 32 and 56 percent respectively in phosphate rock and phosphoric acid then these quantities are fine. Otherwise you have to appropriately calculate and then take the quantities of phosphate rock and then phosphoric acid. However, the ratio between two raw materials is proposed to have between 2 and 2.5 for a better conversion of the raw materials. Flow chart is shown here uh, for the production of superphosphate and triple superphosphate again. So, both of them we have already discussed. So, then we can go to the process description of a triple superphosphate production. Uh, it, it is very similar to superphosphate production. Phosphoric acid at 60 to 75 degrees centigrade is mixed with ground rock in a continuous mixer, then passed to a continuous belt where reaction is completed in 15 to 20 minutes. Product is next granulated, dried and bagged. If a more complete fertilizer is desired except phosphoric acid is used and neutralized with ammonia as has been done in the case of superphosphate. The same thing can be done here in the case of triple superphosphate as well. Potassium salts can also be added if required as per the requirement of mixed chemical fertilizers. And then these two are options in production of both superphosphates as well as the triple superphosphates. Economics of phosphate fertilizers, two important factors are production allocations and competitive process possibilities we have to see. Under production allocations if you see the trends are towards manufacture of triple superphosphates in the developed countries with subsequent ammonia neutralization and KCL additions to yield high nitrogen fertilizers is there. But however, for India PK fertilizers, phosphorus potassium fertilizers was not the best option because these raw materials for uh, phosphorus and potassium are not indigenous for us, we are importing them. So, additional foreign exchange required to add H3PO4 units to superphosphate plants was preferentially allocated to mixed fertilizers based on ammonia phase with or without sulphate. And then obviously, because of this one additions of calcium phosphate fertilizers were halted in around 1960s and then bulk superphosphate production is shipped at higher cost per ton of active ingredients and this does not require 
any foreign exchange expenditures. Competitive process uh, possibilities, nitrophosphate fertilizers which involve digesting phosphate rock with HNO3 are considered equal or better for meeting India's immediate fertilizer needs rather going for these superphosphate and triple superphosphate where you need uh, strong phosphoric acid etc for which you need to depend on the foreign exchange. But now this nitrophosphate fertilizers are easy to make because we have HNO3 sources and then phosphate rocks you can react easily that in fact we are going to discuss uh, in the subsequent slide how to produce this nitrophosphate fertilizers. So you find production of nitrophosphate is much easier and economical compared to the production of superphosphates and triple superphosphates. So now we discuss ammonium phosphates before going into the nitrophosphates. Pertinent properties of ammonium phosphates, monoammonium phosphate if you want to produce what should be done and then diammonium phosphate if you want to produce what should be done that is what we are going to see. But now we see their properties, pertinent properties of monoammonium phosphate, molecular weight 115, melting point it decomposes on heating density 1.8 gram per cc, solubility 32 grams per 100 cc of water at 15 degree centigrade. Whereas diammonium phosphate if you take its molecular weight is 132, it also decomposes on heating so there is no melting point. Density is uh, lower than the monoammonium phosphate, here it is 1.62 gram per cc but the solubility is very high compared to the monoammonium phosphate in water. Here it is diammonium phosphate solubility is 131 grams per 100 cc of water at 15 degree centigrade. Consumption pattern only major use is chemical fertilizers, mixed chemical fertilizers for that purpose only it is used whereas minor uses are in fire retardants, nutrient yeast culture etc. Production of ammonium phosphate as chemical fertilizer we see now here ammonium phosphate in the sense both nitrogens and then phosphates are present N and P2O5 both are present in that one how that is what we are going to see now. Chemical reaction ammonia react with the phosphoric acid to produce uh, mono ammonium phosphate. This mono ammonium phosphate reacts with uh, ammonia again to give diammonium phosphate. Ammonia also reacts with the sulfuric acid to give ammonium bisulfate which further react with ammonia to give ammonium sulfate. Okay. Quantitative requirements obviously ammonia and then phosphoric acid, sulfuric acids are required but depends on the grades of material how much pure H3PO4 is there and then what is the percentage of P2O5 etc. All those things are uh, playing role and then obviously depending on what grade of ammonia and what grade of phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid are using the quantities are changing. However, you can compute by st uh, on stoichiometric uh, ratios basis allow 99 percent of yield and 3 percent ammonia handling loss to get the exact required quantities. For the production of ammonium phosphate or uh, mixed chemical fertilizer production we have a flow chart here. We have already discussed it in the previous lecture where we were discussing about the production of phosphoric acid. Right? So, however, we go through once again it whatever the phosphate rock is there that you ground to approximately 200 mesh size and this you take it to a batch mixing reactor where baffling or mixing are provided thoroughly. To this reactor sulfuric acid and then recycled phosphoric acid are being added up. Right? So, when this reaction takes place some fumes, furnace fumes would be there like you know SIF4, HF etc. Those things are taken to a scrubber to scrub out with uh, water and then take to the uh, whatever the slurry is there that you take to slurry lagoon whereas the gases you take out wind. The main product that is coming out of uh, this reactor, batch mixing reactor is nothing but a gypsum plus phosphoric acid along with some impurities maybe, right. So, this mixture is taken to a traveling pan filter to which weak acid is provided to wash. So, then whatever the filtrate is there of this filter that is taken as a recycled phosphoric acid and then 
sent to the batch mixing reactor where the main reaction is taking place, right? So, here in this traveling pan filter, by the filtration you can get approximately 40 percent uh, phosphoric acid, right? And then this mixture also contains some amount of a H2SO4, unreacted H2SO4 that actually makes filtration of gypsum easily. And then when this slurry product moves to the other end of this traveling filter, to the other end you get almost pure gypsum. So, that is washed with wash water if at all traces of phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid are present. So, the washed gypsum you can uh, collect as a product whereas the you know weak acid because of uh, washing with uh, hot water instead they are recycled to the reactor again. So, this part we have seen. So, this 40 percent phosphoric acid whatever you are getting from this traveling pan filter is there that you can uh, take it to a single effect evaporator to concentrate it to the higher percentage of phosphoric acid something like uh, more than 50 percent phosphoric acid up to 75 percent etc. Right? So, up to this part is phosphoric acid production. Now, this phosphoric acid whether the concentrated one or the weak phosphoric acid along with the sulfuric acid is taken to a series of 3 mixed reactors, continuous mixed reactors 1, 2, 3 are there. So, this mixture of phosphoric acid and then uh, sulfuric acid along with the ammonia are taken to the first reactor where the uh, reaction is taking place. To this reactor liquid ammonia is given from the bottom. Right? Product mixture is whatever is there that is taken to the second reactor to which also liquid ammonia is provided from the uh, bottom and then that product mixture is whatever is there from the second reactor that is taken to this third reactor to which also liquid ammonia is provided from the uh, bottom because this ammonia is neutralizing agent. So, this section whatever is there is known as the neutralizing section. Okay? So, the product that is coming from here is almost like pure ammonium phosphate. Whatever the unreacted or excess ammonia is there that is recovered from the top of each reactor right? and then sent to a uh, scrubber where you can remove fumes, dust, etc. if at all present using the water. Vent gas you can take out and then almost clean ammonium liquid that you can feed back to the reactor one. This will reduce the ammonia loss, this recycling of ammonia by passing through a scrubber, etc. This process will reduce the ammonia loss because we know ammonia is very expensive, right? So, then product mixture from the third mixer uh, reactor whatever is there that is nothing but the main product that is taken to a rotary granulator. To this rotary granulator if at all some filler are required fillers along with the potash crystals are added if required and then this mixture is rotated in this rotary granulator drum. When it rotates the mixture you know that gets granulated those granules of the product are taken to a rotary dryer to which hot air is uh, supplied at approximately 150 degrees centigrade so that drying of these granules takes place and then uh, less hot gases uh, at approximately 80 degrees centigrade are collected from the top of the drum rotary dryer. You know it may be containing some dust also so that mixture is taken to a cyclone separator where the dust fines etc. are collected from the bottom and then sent back to the uh, you know rotary granulator here again in this. Okay. Right? Whereas, the gases, air etc. if at all any products, fine products are still there, they are taken to the scrubber in which ammonia scrubbing is done to remove the dust fumes etc. to that scrubber they have been taken. From the rotary dryer whatever the product is there that is passed through a double deck uh, screens where the products having minus 6 plus 2 mesh size are taken as the uh, required product whereas the oversized materials are grinded against and then under undersized fines are sent back to the granulator to make up the size of the granules again. Okay. So, this is the process here you can see that you know ammonium nitrate chemical fertilizer you can produce within the same plant of phosphoric acid production. Okay. So, whatever the raw materials required like H3PO4 and then neutralizing agent ammonia etc. you know these are you know produced in the plant itself. If you have a complete fertilizer plant these are produced there itself. Only thing that this potash crystals are not available not produced in the plant itself or have to be imported or taken from the external sources 
you know if at all you wanted to have them in the mixed chemical fertilizers. Same thing whatever we discussed in flowchart I are provided as a process description here. This process we have already discussed in the previous lecture where we were discussing you know production of uh, phosphoric acid using wet processes right. Now here we discuss once again however we discuss only relevant things. What are the relevant things to the production of ammonium phosphate purpose? One is the neutralization section, another one is the granulation section those things we are going to discuss here. For neutralization in a series of 3 continuous mixed reactors phosphoric acid and sulfuric acids are added to the first reactor. Beneath the slurry level in the first neutralizer anhydrous liquid ammonia is added in an amount equivalent to 80 percent uh, neutralization. Additional ammonia is also added in subsequent reactors to obtain conversion to the diammonium salt if higher end fertilizer is aimed to prepare. Slurry gets nearly heated up to boiling point of 130 degree centigrade because of heat of the exothermic reaction. From top of each tank unreacted excess ammonia vapor is collected and recharged below the liquid level which can cut down the ammonia losses to less than 3 percent. For the granulation section slurry from the third neutralizer is mixed with uh, potash crystals and absorbed in a bed of dry recycled fertilizer moving through a rotating drum granulator. This provides a tumbling action to coat uh, recycled material with a slurry film. Using air at 150 degree centigrade, a rotary adiabatic dryer reduces moisture content to less than 1 percent within a 10 minutes contact time. Final dried product is separated into 3 fractions on a double deck screens. A portion of product from a deck of lower screen having minus 6 plus 12 size is sent to bagging operations. Balance together with uh, pulverized oversize and fines is returned to the granulator. Weight ratio of recycle to product should be maintained 6 is to 1 to 1.5 is to 1. Okay. Major engineering problems, ammonia losses is one problem one has to make sure ammonia recovery has to be properly done and then taken back to the first mixer reactor of a neutralization section. Okay. And another problem is the corrosion, right? To avoid corrosion, SS316 recommended for hot acid and fume ducts. Carbon steel recommended for granulation, drying, and screening sections or equipment where granulation, drying, and screening are being done. Economics, raw materials requirement, completely integrated fertilizer plant if you are having, then required raw materials of ammonia, phosphoric acids are uh, produced there itself, only potash to be imported. Plant investment and production cost, one has to check capital investment, production and shipping cost for the concentration whereas it has been found that the capital and then production cost are comparable. So the shipping cost is important and it has been found that shipping cost is less for higher nitrogen and phosphorus uh, fertilizers. Now we discuss about nitrophosphates. Nitrophosphates can be easily produced by reacting the phosphate rock with nitric acid alone or nitric acid plus sulfuric acid which is known as the mixed acid. Okay. Nitrophosphates are mixtures of ammonium nitrate and various phosphates. These are made by acidulation of phosphate rock with nitric acid alone or in combination with sulfuric acid. It is attractive for countries lacking indigenous S because it does not necessarily require sulfuric acid, it is optional only. Okay. But however, if you have the sulfuric acid it is better because in the nitric acid plant what happens this uh, calcium nitrate is forming and this is uh, very difficult to remove from the mixture, product mixture. So you have to do the crystallization etc. But if you have this sulphur then what happens it forms calcium sulphate so which is easy to remove. Okay. Those reactions anyway we are going to see here. First reaction is nitric acid digestion ammonia neutralization reaction where calcium phosphate react with the nitric acid ammonia to give the calcium nitrate and then calcium hydrogen phosphate along with the ammonium nitrate. Nitric acid sulfuric acid digestion and ammonia neutralization reaction here calcium phosphate reacts with the nitric acid plus sulfuric acid that is mixed acid along with the ammonia to give 
the same calcium, hydrogen phosphate and then ammonium nitrate. Okay? Now here you see in this process calcium nitrate is formed, in this process calcium sulphate is formed. Now conversion to mono calcium phosphate. This calcium hydrogen phosphate whatever is there that further reacts with the sulfuric acid to give calcium biphosphate and then calcium sulphate. Carbonitric process here calcium phosphate react with the nitric acid, ammonia, carbon dioxide and water that is the reason since you have the carbon dioxide also in the uh, reactants it is known as the carbonitric process because both carbon dioxide and nitric acid are there. So, when this reaction takes place you get calcium hydrogen phosphate along with the ammonium nitrate and then calcium carbonate. Now you see the reactions are very simple but the chemistry is much more complex than the reaction that are in indicating because small changes variations in these quantities different reactions may take place. Ratios of constitutions can be varied to produce different types of products in this uh, process. These simplified reactions neglect the fluorine in phosphate rock. So now these reactions what you see here calcium sulphate is forming, calcium carbonate is forming. So these are easy to remove from the process. But calcium nitrate it is not easy to separate because it is highly hygroscopic and then product become very lumpy. right? So then uh, in order to remove this one you have to do the crystallization at low temperature. Process description. Rock phosphate is pulverized and digested with nitric or mixed acid in a mixer type equipment which is having something like you know batch mixing kind of reactor where you may be having baffles etc. in order to enhance the mixing such kind of reactors where we have seen in wet uh, processes uh, for the production of phosphoric acid we have used. Same equipment is uh, used here also. Required acid strength is 25 to 40 percent HNO3. Final digested slurry is pumped to an ammoniating tank where chemical reactions are completed. Then slurry is granulated and dried in a rotary equipment and screened in a conventional classifying circuit. So now what you see the process is quite similar to whatever we have seen in uh, superphosphate and triple superphosphate and then uh, mixed chemical fertilizers like you know uh, ammonium nitrate etc. those kind of process we have seen it is same like that only. So that is the reason we are not uh, having flow sheet separately for this one. Major engineering problems are a removal of calcium nitrate and then corrosion. So then calcium nitrate is uh, very hygroscopic and will cause product to lump. So this calcium nitrate has to be removed from the product. Okay? So the digested liquor must be chilled to remove calcium nitrate by crystallization. Whereas this problem is not existing in other two reactions where calcium sulphate and then calcium carbonate are uh, forming which are easy to remove. Corrosion, digestion and neutralization equipment requires 18.8 SS because of uh, nitric acid corrosiveness. Plant costs are higher than in wet process phosphoric acid plant which has a larger percentage of mild steel equipment. Okay? So mild steel equipment are used in the wet process phosphoric acid plant. So then you know the cost whatever the plant cost is less there but here you need to have the SS. So then plant cost is going to be slightly higher. You need it here because here HNO3 is there which is highly corrosive. Now sodium phosphates. Several combinations of sodium with phosphorus and oxygen exist and structures of few are provided below. N number of are there, we are uh, having a few. One is the metaphosphate, another one is the hexametaphosphate, polyphosphate, then pyrophosphate, then orthophosphates, these are all orthophosphates where here X is there that is monovalent alkali metal such as sodium. Now let us say here it is Na5P3O10 is nothing but STTP, sodium tripolyphosphate. Here also like that you know different products are there. Okay? X stands for monovalent alkali metal such as sodium here. Consumption pattern, 
Most of the alkali phosphates produced in USA are used for the detergent formulation, but because of ecological consideration force reduction in phosphate content of detergents in USA. However, these phosphates are also widely used in metal cleaning, boiler water treatment, in textile industries, in foodstuffs, etc. Now, methods of production we see ortho and polyphosphates are made from varying ratios of sodium carbonate, sodium hydroxide, and orthophosphoric acid. Okay? Other salts are made from corresponding phosphoric acids, meta and pyrophosphoric acids, etc. Now, we see only one type of sodium phosphate that is sodium tripolyphosphate production that is nothing but NaFiP3O10 which is also known as STTP sodium tripolyphosphate. Chemical reactions, sodium carbonate react with the phosphoric acid to give sodium tripolyphosphates that is STTP, water and CO2. Pertinent properties, molecular weight is 368. It is white powder uh, in physical state uh, if you see, it is white powder. Solubility is 12.8 grams per 100 cc of water at 20 degrees centigrade and then its solubility increases to 33 grams in 100 cc of water if you increase the temperature to 100 degrees centigrade. pH of 1 percent of uh, this sodium tripolyphosphate is 9.7 because it is a powder you take it in water, you make 1 percent solution, that solution is having 9.7 pH. Quantitative requirements, basis for 1 ton of sodium tripolyphosphate production at 99 percent yield, how much sodium carbonate you required? 8.81 tons which is having 58 percent Na2O and then phosphoric acid having 75 percent H3PO4 you required 1 ton. Okay. Plant capacities usually 20 to 150 tons a day is the size range in general. Okay. Size range in the sense they are not produced in the plant, but these are you know varied a lot as H3PO4 is made from P4 and converted to STTP at consumers plants to save freight cost etc. They are produced on demand kind of thing. Flow chart for the production of sodium tripolyphosphate is provided here. Whatever phosphoric acid is there that is diluted in a dilution tank and then dry soda ash whatever is there that is saturated in a uh, mixer by adding with the water, soda ash saturator and then dilute acid are taken to a mixing tank. Right? From here whatever the gases are evolving they are scrubbed with water to remove CO2 whereas the remaining solutions are taken back to the mixing tank. Here mixing tank the Na2O divided by P2O5 ratio is maintained 1.67 and then the mixture is taken to the holding tanks which is primarily containing sodium phosphate solution 1 mole of monosodium to 2 moles of disodium phosphates. These are taken to the filter and then to the feed tank followed by cyclone dust collector to remove the dust etc. Okay. The product that is coming from the feed tank after reaction that is pumped to a drying indirect fired and cooled rotary dryer where two zones are there, there is a drying zone and then cooling zone, both of them are present in the same in this one in one single unit operations. And this is done by the hot air here, so whatever the gases are coming out from the rotary dryer, so they are taken to the cyclone separator to collect the dust and then feed back to the rotary dryer again whereas the clean gas is taken out from the vent as a top. The dried granules whatever are there, they are taken as a sodium tripolyphosphate products from the bottom here. Process description, in this process saturated soda ash solution and technical grade phosphoric acids are diluted with water and steam in batch mixing tanks. Ratios of Na2O divided by P2O5 must be maintained at 1.67 so that to form 1 mole of monosodium to 2 moles of disodium phosphate. This mole ratio is important to produce these products. CO2 comes off and is scrubbed by the incoming water to return entrained solids. Solution is filtered then to remove impurities, then dried, dehydrated, annealed and cooled along with the length of an indirect fired rotary kiln. Then finally grinding, storage and packaging of the product is done. 
References for this lecture are provided here, but however, the entire lecture is prepared from this reference book. Thank you. Thank you.